Hey Trekland, it's Dr. Trek Larry Nimichek back again and I am so thrilled to actually make it up the pike and you should do this too if you're here in SoCal or mid-California. Get to Santa Barbara, or actually go Lita, to the campus of UC Santa Barbara. Through April 30th this year, there's an incredible exhibit that's been expanded and extended to honor the work of Oscar winner and Mr. Star Trek makeup, Mike Westmore. <laughs> this makeup was originally designed for Mark Alimo, yeah. and he was supposed to be cold, lizard-like, uh, and, yeah. and instead of doing a full makeup, they had all these little individual pieces for it. If you'll notice, there's this little spoon that's in the middle of the forehead on the males and the females. Right. Uh, I was going to dinner in Studio City one night, Mary and I were, and went by an art shop, and there was a big painting on the wall that had a spoon in the center, of a woman with a spoon. And I kind of looked at Mary and I said, that's interesting. I'm going to use that someday, somewhere <laughs> on an alien. And this was the perfect opportunity to, to bring back the spoon. Right. And then they even turned it into the racial slur for them, the spoon heads. Yeah. They used the, that. Oh, they all, butt heads for the Ferengi. They yeah. All, yeah. Well, something yeah. almost came out. And well, the, here's, they're, they're over here. Here's yeah. Patrick Stewart. I was going to say, bus. speaking of full head, uh, the reason for this was when we were doing one of the movies, Patrick was doing a play in New York, and he had to come back and do this fight at the end of the movie, running and jumping and... Uh, oh, probably Generations. Yeah, it could have been Generations yeah. at the very end. And Patrick's head is such a shape that the normal bald caps didn't fit properly. They always had a buckle in them. So flew to New York, made a cast of his head, and uh, made uh, the bald cap on this head. So then it fit absolutely perfect. And then his hair was so short, when he was filming, we took a flocking machine with little pieces of hair that were about an eighth of an inch long and flocked his hair back onto it. So they could shoot uh, two or three days of additional footage of that fight. Just over his shoulder stuff, right? No, they're all big, total things. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. No, the whole, whole pieces of the fight. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, the exhibits, we're just a bit in one corner. This is the Borg wall. Um, and, and data. And data. I'm just going to kind of... a picture of, of Brandt here. Right, for, every, for those who don't know. <laughs> because that's one that any museum wants to get everybody in. And, and we, you know. This is what... Now, I did Brent's makeup, I would say, 99.99 times, unless for some reason there was one or twice that I wasn't able to do it. But this makeup never changed. Just the ever, daily routine. Ever. Yeah. Uh, in, in the time that he did the television and the features. And his hairline here, which a lot of people thought was a wig, I would actually take and pencil it in hard right around the edge. Of course, he had his yellow contact lenses to block out his eyebrows, uh, and then uh, do his hands, and had different makeup and aqua color, which, which is uh, almost the same color as his base, which was a very pale gold. Right, when you finally got to it. After the mad dash at the beginning, right? Yes. <laughs> Going through all those yeah. child colors. And here's, here's yeah. Uh, oh yeah, in the, in the very beginning, uh, of which I didn't know if I wanted to do the Star Trek. I had talked to Roddenberry, I wanted to talk to Marion, and they said, well, you got to make up your mind because we're going to start doing makeup tests on Monday. And, and this go, was? Oh my God, this was 1987. No, this was what, a Thursday? Yes, it was Thursday. Thursday. That I, Thursday that I was talking to him. <laughs> you start on Monday, let and us you know. You start on Monday, yeah, let me know if you're going to do it or not. <laughs> and here's and, the list. And they had a whole list of colors that we tried on, on Brent. And after we got done testing, uh, Gene said, you know, my favorite colors would be, and he had that lyrical voice, bubblegum pink or battleship gray. And I thought for a minute, I'm going, bubblegum pink is going to turn him into Ken. <laughs> you know, <laughs> to go with Barbie. In the Battleship Grey, I said, you know, I would really like to be able to keep that for bad guys. He said, okay, what do, what do you think? So that's when I came up with this mixture of white gold and yellow gold that went over a very pale grease foundation, packed it in really tight into his face. Yeah. Of course, wardrobe hated me because it would wind up on his, you know, around <laughs> his collar and everything. But, I mean, a lot of people have heard the, the color story. I don't think people get that we're talking about just a day or two that you went through all that, right? One. 
One day. One day. All of that was yeah. packed into one. Yeah, day. we'd clean them up, put another one on, run them in, test them, clean them up. So, yeah, yeah we did many, many colors on them. And then, uh, of course, we, we opened up Brent so many times. These are head pieces, but we did his arms, we did his fingers. Right. We did, and lift up his fingernail in one, you know. You've got some of that. I mean, I. I People need to come if they can and see it here, or, or you know, it's been out in the books and things. But to have it here live is, is is great, and including uh, there was putting put him together. Right, first contact, a last look, and this is Lol from Lol. Right. This is Lol. Has this been? Have some of these pieces been on display for anybody to see? Never. Any of the tour things? Never. This is the first time. So come to Little Santa these, Barbara. Yes. We and made up heads, you know, things we made up heads to go on display, like the Ferengi head we have over here. Right. But piece, these pieces, no, they never been on display. This is from 1989-90 of LOL. This is one of my favorite shows. Mm -hmm. Lenny Crofit that actually played my little oh. Oscar statue that uh, leads into this. Right. Uh, this the Oscar piece, statue. Yeah. <laughs> the unformed android. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, Michael Jr. is the one that did all the electronics on the yeah, show. Your yeah, your son. Yes. I would give him these little plates like this and put a little electronic stuff on them. Uh, I mean, just the, the taping, and he would go ahead and build all of the LEDs and the wiring and everything for it. Yeah. And this actually, there was so many lights in this thing that it would overheat. So we'd have to close it down. Like I can't. I don't want to break it. <laughs> I was uh, say, break your own museum. Yeah. It, it would get so hot that we would literally have to turn it off as soon as they said cut. Right. Because we thought we could. Some of these other things we could leave going, and it wouldn't make any difference. Uh, down and, here, and again, yeah. we're talking about 20, 30 year old technology too. Yes. Which okay. now has has modernized so much, even yeah. just since then. Yeah. yeah. These it would all be different today right. if we were doing it. Now this is from first contact. When and the, and there's your, yeah. your notes? Those are my notes that I took to, to Berman to get an approval. Uh, this is when she comes in and she blows on his arm and you see the little right. hair. Kind right. of the Borg Queen. Right, the Borg Queen. And these are the actual... This is the arm. And these would slip over like a sleeve and then mm -hmm. glue around his wrist here and glue up here and usually his uniform would cover down to here. Now this is... He's turning into human in this part of his arm. All this hair here was punched in individually with a needle. Right, I'm trying to, you can see a little bit of the silhouette there on the side, mm -hmm. but, but, right. <laughs> this was an intermediate one that showed little technology that was underneath the skin. This is the full-blown one, when all of a sudden the flesh has been taken away, and this thing also, it, it lit up like a Christmas tree. Yeah. Right. <laughs> in in uh, Michael Jr.'s Morse code. Yes. <laughs> Not that one. The eyes did. The Borg eyes did. Yeah, speaking of the Borg. Speaking of the Borg, uh, Jackie Goner, um, wonderful, wonderful costumer, designed this for the exhibit, which I think is almost, it's a, a design that I wish we'd had, you know, for a first contact, that even for the Borg queen. <laughs> this is so much intricate work that she did on all this and then Michael rewired everything so it would work. Uh, this is one of the original Borg guys but we weren't using this technology at that time. It was all right. LEDs run off batteries. Right. It's just amazing to think just how much, I mean this was the new improved Borg mm -hmm. and just how much things have new and improved since oh, then. And today, today if we were there, because you know what's interesting about doing it over and over and over again you have a, a sense that you have to continually improve on it. Mm -hmm. I'm saying if I was involved with it now, I would probably be taking it further than they can take it now because they're having to step and start kind of maybe a step up from where I left off. But it, that, that's what was so nice for everybody that worked for the original Star Trek for all those years is you kept trying to outdo yourself. Right. You know? and, that, and all the departments were that way. That's yeah. Was, yeah. That's incredible. This was a head... A right. damaged, destroyed Borg head. This is a Borg Queen from First Contact. Yep. Right. Yep. <laughs> What's interesting, this is probably just supposed to be an ND Borg. Mm -hmm. It's actually Data. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, so not the Queen. Oh, that's Data. That, so. that wasn't for Data. It was, yeah. yeah, yeah. And of course, here's Alice, right. who was a real trooper. There's, you know, I was going to say. Not every actor, actress wants to go through what she went through. 
And this is a daily process of having uh, a throat put on and uh, the face and all the lights and electronics and everything. And then her contact lenses were made at NASA and they were beautiful silver eyes and they were not comfortable at all. It was like wearing full scleral eyes. Uh, they couldn't stay in for long periods of time. They to give her eyes a, a break and get out of it, you know, after a while. Yeah. But yeah. she was wonderful. Here's a process here. Here's some Borg development. Yeah, this is how the concepts of what maybe the eyepieces should look like, a variety. So now, is, this is Q-Who, though. This isn't first contact, right? No. Is this, this is first go-round on the first Borg? No, no, no. This, this is the, our ladder Borg for the movie. Okay, okay. Yeah. So this is the redo. Yeah. Okay. And or the upgrade. <laughs> yeah, exactly, because they're bald. The ones early on had no right. on. Okay. I thought I saw it. Well, that is a ball. Okay, no, that's well, not a cap. Yeah. If, if you get little pieces in here, these are plantons. You know, like opening the head up, and here's plantons that go into it. Right. Uh, here's a big side planton. But this just gave me a variety of ideas for different eyes, of which we had like right. ten different molds for making eyes. Right. Well, they came up with the, who was it that came up with the mass production? Uh, for what? Uh, on the Borg. It's like instead of like the pieces, like make one big head, but they separate it, and so you use one thing on one guy and one on another drone. And I did that. Okay. That's yeah. What I was that's say. right. Yeah. Well, the first helmets were just helmets that slipped on. Right. The very first ones you ever see, and then when they came back for Series another season, right. I made the helmets, but I opened up a spot here on the sides, on the back. There was like a half a dozen areas, and so you could give you variations by closing up certain sections of it. Right, and then speaking of Mark, here's a nice pictorial how-to. Yes. <laughs> How to Borgify anybody in your you own home. You can see they're gluing the little, little, just little pieces on here and there on them. Uh, then the individual pieces go on. Right. And here's his Borg eye. And then we have the tubing and everything. Actually, you know what's interesting? These should be reversed. I never caught it. Okay. This goes. This is the final one. Glad we can help out. Hey. And this is. So this is. Did we wander into the modern art uh, gallery here? This is yeah. what this. <laughs> a performance art piece. Yeah. Or a, this is uh, a variety of the eyepieces. And here's a side piece. You know, this is a side piece. Oh, this is, uh, yeah, the way this is displayed yeah. is really interesting. So yeah, all kinds of different mm -hmm. board pieces. Yeah. And then, of course, here it comes down where there was one Borg. Actually, they hired a man that didn't have an arm. And so this little piece here was made to slip on because this gave you the effect that the big Borg arm, that's how it was attached mm -hmm. to him with this little piece mm -hmm. here. But the, the, the uh, stunt person extra that had that actually was limbless. There. Right, right. Well, there you go. And then, and then of course... Jerry Ryan. Jerry the Trooper. And her, <laughs> and her full board hanging. Oh, yeah. yeah. Again, you know, to, to apply it and take it off, it's, uh, you have to have a performer that's really going to put up with it. Yeah. You know, um, I think I only had one person in my 18 years that when he came in to the lab and I said, this is what we have planned for you. You know, you're going to be, a, uh, it was a humanoid. It wasn't even an alien. And he goes, well, they didn't tell me I was going to do that. I'm not going to do that. And he got up and left. And they hired somebody else. Huh. But he was a really good-looking guy, and he wanted to look like him. Right. So He wanted his calling card. Yeah. Yeah, I had a fight with Joel Gray, too. And Joel, you know, he didn't want to wear that nose. Do I have to wear that nose? Just that tiny little... Uh... And, and he, would, he would call me and say, well, call Ray, I can see if I, can, if I don't have to wear the nose. And I'd say, you got a whole race of people that are going to be wearing those nose. you got to do it. <laughs> okay. You know, so. He gave in. That he had to do that. Yeah. Well,